zero accounting software, customer revenue or accounts receivable cycle. Get ready to be an office hero with zero. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation. I'm going to zoom in a bit by holding control and scrolling up on the mouse wheel to 175% zoom in. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We will be opening the demo file, but I'm going to reset the demo file to its original data and that will open up the demo file once done resetting. Going to hide the little item up top. We're going to be opening up the major financial statement reports, balance sheet income statement as we do every time. By right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it, second tab, I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it again. Going back to the middle tab, let's go to the accounting dropdown, reports, and we want to be opening up the balance sheet, which is a favorite. It must be a favorite. If you do not have it as a favorite, there's something wrong with you. It's a favorite report. Accounting dropdown again, reports, and then we're gonna have the other favorite, the income statement. In the middle tab, the balance sheet tab, we're gonna change the date on the dropdown, customizing it, and we wanna bring that to 2022. And there it is, I'll update it, refreshing that. We're at 175% on the zoom in, so that looks good. And then on the first tab, back to the first tab, we're gonna be looking now at what we might call the revenue cycle, the customer cycle, the receivable cycle, the cycle which at the end of the day should result in money coming into the business from customers for goods and services being provided. Now, like with the vendor cycle, if I hit the drop down, many of the forms that facilitate the journal entries that then create the end result financial statements and related reports are here. Those forms being an invoice, for example, and uh, the receive money forms, for example. However, it's useful to think about the flow and the flow could change depending on the type of industry we are in. So to consider the flow, let's first jump on back over to our flow chart and just think about the flow of the normal forms in a standard, uh, a standard kind of revenue process or accounts receivable or sales cycle. So at the end of the day, we expect to have a deposit going into our system, increasing our checking account from customers for goods and services. Now, the easiest kind of system we could have, and it will be dependent upon the industry we are in, is if we could just set up the bank feeds, for example, and allow the deposits to come in and then just record the deposits from the bank feeds as revenue, increasing the checking account, increasing the sales at that point in time. That would be great, but there's only you can only do that in certain industries. So if you do gig work or something like that, if you get paid from uh, YouTube and you just wait till they pay you and then you record it as revenue, that's a nice easy system that you can basically just be dependent on the bank feeds and, and use that. Although you do lose a little bit of flexibility with some of the, your sub reports because the deposit form is not generally designed to record revenue. The, the forms generally designed to record revenue is like uh, a receipt payment or an invoice. You, you either have an accrual kind of transaction where you have an invoice or you're getting paid in like a, a cash register type of system, you know, at the same point in time. So in this case, you're getting paid directly from a, a bank feed transaction, possibly from like a platform and therefore you use the deposit. So you're going to lose some detail for like items, for example, sorting the sales by item sorting the sales by customer possibly, but might be well worth it if you have the kind of business where that would be easy to do. Now, that's not a full service accounting system, however, because now you're depending on the bank to record your transactions instead of recording them first and double checking them to the bank. Even a cash based system will usually enter the, the items into your system before they clear the bank, like a check, 
like a cash register situation. You can imagine you're entering the sales into the system as you are receiving them, and then you're going to deposit them into the bank, and then you're going to reconcile in some way, possibly with the use of the bank feeds is the typical way that would go. So even a cash-based system, if you have a cash register, is going to is going to be a little bit more difficult than just waiting till something clears the bank usually because you want the internal controls of counting your receipts in the, that you've made in the system versus the cash that you're counting and then make the deposit yourself, right? You want those internal controls typically, unlike if you just got paid by YouTube or something, right? Which, which it is what it is at that, you know? And then if you're on an accrual system, then you're, that would be like a bookkeeping firm, landscaping firm, for example, or something like that, law firm. Then you're gonna have to bill the client, which we call an invoice. Remember the differences between these terminologies, usually with the accounting software, we think of an invoice as what we do to bill the clients, right? So you can, again, you can use those terms kind of interchangeably. I'm invoicing, I'm billing the clients. Whereas the bill is something, even though we bill the clients from a software perspective, usually is the data input form for when people bill us for work they did for us as the business, for the vendors billing us. So well, you gotta keep the terminology straight in terms of which side of the table we're on. If we have to then enter an invoice, that's going to record revenue and it's going to be recording the uh the accounts receivable then we're going to have to track the accounts receivable and then collect the money on the receivables and then deposit it so that accrual system which would be determined on the type of industry that you're in whether you have to use an accrual system or not will make the bank feeds a little bit more difficult as well we'll talk about bank feeds hopefully we'll have a whole section on bank feeds but but notice if you have an accrual component, it's going to be a little bit more complicated to see where the bank feeds fit into the process and the accrual component, the accrual transaction, this first one, for example, doesn't have any cash related to it at all. And then, of course, if we add inventory into the mix, that's going to confuse things as well, because now we have to track the inventory in some way, either a periodic inventory system, as we talked about on the vendor side, when we purchase the inventory or a perpetual inventory system. A periodic system would be one which we record just the purchases, but we don't track within the zero system, accounting system, the actual units that we're purchasing. And then we possibly track that somewhere else outside on Excel or something. And then we do a physical count, possibly at the end of the day, week, month, and we make a periodic adjustment, re reducing inventory and increasing cost to get sold and expense depending on that adjustment. That's a little bit easier in some ways to set up, but you don't have that automatic tracking within the zero system. Or you can have a perpetual inventory system where you have to set up the items and then the items will be tracked on a sub ledger supporting the balance sheet account of inventory telling us what units we purchase, how many units we have. And then when we sell, we're gonna have to sell using an invoice or a sales a receipt kind of form as opposed to just waiting until something clears the deposit because inventory is going to kind of muddy up the process. I have to use the forms designed for inventory generally. So keeping that flow in mind, you got to think about what kind of business that you are in that you're going to be dealing with. And then you can go into these major forms, which if you're invoicing clients, when you bill them, you can create the invoice form. If you're uh, receiving money, then you could just record the receive money form. You could think about how the bank feeds are going to fit into there, which once again, we'll talk about in a future presentation. And then if you're tracking the accounts receivable, which uh, uh, is quite common even for small businesses, if you're in an industry where you have to deal with accounts receivable, then you can go into the businesses drop down and look at your receivables here. And we'll talk, we'll dig more into this in a future presentation. It's similar to looking at the bills kind of section. And we'll, we'll dive into that more. And you might have to be dealing with the contact list for your customers. And that this will be tracking, you know, who owes you money and so on from a customer by customer standpoint. And on the balance sheet, you're going to have to deal with the accounts receivable account representing sales that we made, but which we have not yet received any money on. And then there's subsidiary uh, reports to that telling us who owes the money. And we'll talk more about those those reports in uh, a future presentation. But 
if you're on a cash based system then you won't have any receivables and of course that'll be a more simplified type of process whether you're on a cash based system or accrual based system is not simply up to you it's not like you can just say ah, i'm just i'm just going to do in a cash based system because it's easier well if if you have to build the clients and then collect them in the future because you're in a bookkeeping company or a law firm or something that's just the way it is for that company well then no you don't have really the choice to do that because it's not going to fit the kind of industry <laughs> that you're in right so if you're in an industry where you can do that like i'm just collecting money from a platform or something like that well then great you know that that system will work so you got to see the industry you're in there's a reason there's industry standards usually that's because logistically those standards work and so then you, you want to know what the industry standard is. Do they use an accrual or cash based system? Why do they use that would be nice to know as well instead of just implementing it blindly. And then you can have a have a understanding of your path forward and why it's why you're doing what you're doing. So we'll talk more about that in future presentations.